Hi, hello everyone. This is English with Beatrice, and you are welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, in my classroom, I do teach English, of course, and um, this day I'm going to be teaching or focusing on English pronunciation. And now, uh, now look at this. Everyone know what is called pronunciation. Um, it's an air of pronunciation, but we do see right subs that are not meaningful. All right. I do not look professional, but today I'm going to be treating these um, different types of punctuation marks that we have in English. Now, the first thing I will do today is to define the punctuation. Now, what is punctuation? Punctuation is just the process of ra of using recognized symbols. Punctuation marks are just symbols. All right. Now, there are symbols that actually make you know a collection of words to look logical. Of course, meaningful, a kind of meaningful piece of writing. And then also one advantage of punctuation is that it helps one's writing to be easier or easier to read and makes the work or the write-up or the piece of work or the text to look more professional. Look at the definition I have here. Punctuation is the process of recognizing words and protocols to turn a collection of words into logical, structured piece of meaningful write-up. Now, it also helps one's writing easier to read and generally look more professional. All right. Now, they have the period, which we also known as the full stop, the comma, the ellipsis, the question mark, the colon, apostrophe, quotation mark, brackets, the hyphen, dash, parentheses, braces, exclamation mark, capital letter, and the slashes. Now, what are the uses of each of these punctuation marks? I will actually start with the period, which is usually known as the full stop. Now, a period is also known as the full stop, fine. But a period usually you no know, end a sentence. When you talk about period, you use period or the full stop mark uh, in most uh, in declarative statements. For instance, my dog is sick. You punctuate it with a full stop. That is, the sentence has come to an end. Now, another example is that you say, Sarah is here. You can also put your full stop. All right. Now, I also want to talk about your full stop, it denotes that this is not a question. Are you getting my point? But a statement. So that's the uses of periods. Now, I also want to go to the question mark. When you hear the question mark, of course, this is the mark of the question mark. Now, now when, each time you ask a question, your tone will rise. Such as, we have example like, is that all you have to say? You apply your question mark because at that time you know that this is not a statement, but it's a question. I guess you can have um, something like, are you done yet? The tone rises. You don't put a full stop in search. You put a question mark. Now, another one is, so what are you going to do? You apply your question mark. Let me give it in a kind of, in a word structure. So what are you going to do? You put a question mark and say, Asked the, the quiz master. Now, I want to go to the next one, which is the exclamation mark. The exclamation mark usually denotes strong emotion within a sentence. It also helps a reader to determine whether a word indicates anger, caution, or passion. For instance, hooray! You say hooray. Of course, that actually denotes strong emotion. The person is happy. Now you can also say, wash out. When you say wash out, of course, it arouses someone's emotion. And of course, at that point, at that time, the person will also was, you know, you know with statue. And in such, you put your exclamation mark because it denotes strong emotion. Now, each time you use words like, go get them. Such, you should apply your exclamation mark. Not a full stop, not a question mark. Okay, it actually denotes strong emotion. Words like wash out, be careful, 
Get up. Get out. Hooray. Such denotes strong emotion. Now, quickly, I want to go to I think. Now, I think join words together. E.g., my eight year old boy loves reading. Now, you, that's my eight year old boy loves reading. Now, when you write it, I believe you are writing now, you are with your writing pad in a pen. Now, my eight year old, the word eight and the word years. Now, there are two words. But you can make them a compound word by using hyphen. In English, you say you hyphenate them. My eight-year-old boy loves reading. You put an hyphen in and in between eight and years. And also, hyphen is also used to explain pronunciation. For instance, you want to break a word. I want to teach somebody how to pronounce a word. Say a word. For instance, crow, co. Dial, alright. Now you put your iPhone after your crow, then you put iPhone, then after co, you put another iPhone, then you write crocodile. For instance, I give you such words like you will see this crow, co, and die. Alright, this is your iPhone. It is a short, you know, it's not as long as the dash, so don't get the two mixed up. Now, let us talk about the brackets. You know, in English, we have several. We have what is called parentheses. All right. But I want to talk about the bracket now. What do we use bracket for? Now, if I look at our symbol for bracket, this is brackets. All right. Now, brackets are actually used to clarify meaning. Now, they also add information to the reader you know, that was not explicitly, you know, stated. All right. Let me say that again, that this bracket adds information to the reader that was not explicitly you know, stated. For instance, I write she, all right, and I do this, Mrs. Jones, all right, permit me, don't mind that my body is a little rough, all right, I'm not with my daughter now, but permit me to use this. Look at your bracket, she, Missy, then you close the bracket, Mrs. Jones, you know, did not find that amusing. Now, look at the way the bracket is used here. Now, this is just an added information. I believe you are getting it. Now, when you may use your bracket, Bracket is actually used within the sentence to add information to the reader. All right. Uh, in some cases, they, they call it, uh, they don't, if you don't want to use bracket, you can put comma, you know, like a position, but I don't want to go to that now. But let's focus on our bracket. It's used to add information to the reader that was not explicitly stated. Uh, another example I can give you is, uh, let me say, I would be happy with any type of dog except that one. Then you put, you write this, do this way. I would be happy, for already started, I would be happy with anyone but not that one. Then you write in between, you are trying to add the information that you, very well you don't want except foodie. All right, you add it, then you continue your sentence. That is the use of brackets, all right? Now, I also want to talk about under punctuation mark. We have the semicolon. Look at our symbol for semicolon here. Don't mix your semicolon for your colon. Semicolon is different. All right, this is your semicolon here. Um, colon. All right, look at the mark again for semicolon. All right, it's not a colon, it's a semicolon. What do we use our semicolon for? Now, semicolon connects independent clauses. I believe you understand me. Now, we can have words like, we walked for an hour. Then you apply your semicolon. I believe you are writing that. You write, we walked for an hour. Apply your semicolon. And that clause, then it appeared from nowhere. Full stop. Now, the first clause that you have that you have joined together with the semicolon, the first one is, we walked for an hour. 
you put your semicolon and then you add then it appeared from nowhere i believe you understand that then you know put your full stop no that what the semicolon you have actually used in between the two clauses have actually connect the two independent clauses i believe you understand that next i'll go to the comma look at our comma here all right this is the symbol for the comma what do we use comma for number one comma separate items in the list you want to say i'm going to the market to buy this fruits that you put uh for instance a comma now you say uh mango put comma all right apple you apply under comma and watermelon it puts a full stop so in that sense you actually use three commas what i just said is that comma is used to separate items in the list another use of comma is that comma is used to sh to break to is used to show a break or a pause a short pause in a sentence all right now i actually believe you are getting me and make sure you're upping your rap attention for example i want to use my comma and i say as the day comes to an end i apply my comma now the firefighters put out the last spark i say that again as the day comes to an end comma the firefighters put out the last spark you put your foot and your foot stop that's it now a comma can be used to show a break or a short pause now i want to please go to another punctuation which is our apostrophe now when you look at the word this is our apostrophe mark this very one up here what do we use our apostrophe for number one our apostrophe is used to denote omission of a letter like you have these words permit me to claim all this i believe you must have copied something all right permit me i'm using my my aunt okay now now you want to use your apostrophe and to show omission of the letter it can be used for contraction to contract two words together now you write they are okay you have actually contracted these two words yeah and you omitted you actually remove the letter a and put your semicolon to contract the two words now apostrophe also can be used to show omission in uh let's say omission of word it might not be in actual this very type but maybe uh to show ownership you say um this is bob's house all right let me write this this way look up permit me i have part this i please your pardon this is bob's house all right now the apostrophe has been, has been used here to show that this house you know it's bob's uh bob's possess the house the the house is owned by bob's i believe that is clear so easy now bob's house look at an, another apostrophe all right now this is different from the first this is just used to show ownership or possession the first one i said to contract all right two words together all right that contraction in english now i can also make another example vanessa's village or flora's pen they are going to go to the ellipses look at our ellipses here look at the spelling look at the three dots they are not four dots they are not two but they are three dot what do we use ellipses for number one ellipses is used to show that part of a sentence are left out and of course they are understood it's deliberate now i can give you an example um mom you have once told me that and you didn't complete the statement but mom understand what you are talking about mom you once told me that. That. And you add your ellipses, three dots. All right. Now, mom understand what you have committed. She knows what you left unsaid. I believe you are getting that. Now, 
uh, most people do make mistakes. They just apply two dots or three dots. No, it's wrong. Okay. Now our now um punctuation mark I want to talk about is your dash. When you look up here, you see that the dash. All right, the symbol is longer than the hyphen. As I said earlier, the hyphen symbol is short, and the dash is longer a little. Now when you talk about your dash, dash is a little longer than hyphen. And when you look at dash. That is not something you can just use anyhow. You use your dash in situations like to show strong interruption. Okay, strong interruption. Not to join two words together, but to show strong interruption. Like something we're talking. I you are both saying something and somebody interrupted you. You like see your three dots. You continue again. You start again. I, I, I mean no. You are interrupted again. You have the three dots here before you comma. All right, that you have been interrupted. Your lips is at first said it show deliberate omission and to also show that um words your words have been interrupted. When I talk about um, your which one have I not spoken about now? Let me talk about your capital letter. It's so easy. Now, we use your capital letter to begin sentence. You want to start a sentence. You dare not start a sentence with a small letter. No. You start a sentence with a capital letter. All right, look at capital letter T. The house is far. All right, far. Now, this is the capital letter T. Also, you can also use a sentence. To begin your proper noun or your name, let me see. You want to start the you want to write up you write your own name. You don't write small letter J, all right. You will start with capital letter J for James or Jennifer. Now when you talk about the parentheses, look at parentheses here. It's your round bracket, round bracket. Now, how do you use your parentheses? Now, to add, your parenthesis is a little different from your brackets. Look at the shape. Look at parentheses. Look at your brackets. All right. Parentheses are round brackets. They are also used to add information. Now, you provide an information, then you use your parentheses. All right. Then you can also use your parentheses, you know, to say, like I said earlier, when I use my bracket, I said, you know, she, and I, and I use bracket this way. That's the difference. The parenthesis, you write it this way. She, that is Mrs. Jones, you know, you know, said or did not find it amusing. Now, this is an additional information there. All right. Now, you also use your parenthesis to organize list of items. Like, you say, number one. Write your number one, the house is far, or oh, I'm talking about these things. I have a, a basket you know, full of fruits. And you put your colon, fruits. Then you start number one. Mango, mango, number two, your orange, your orange. Now, are you listening to me? Now, this is the way you have used all your parenthesis is your round bracket to show list of items. And I believe that you're actually following me and that the class is not boring. All right. Now, as mentioned, the capital letter, the exclamation mark, which is used for um, strong emotion or to denote strong emotion. And I've just spoke, spoken about the semicolon, the hyphen, the quotation mark, all right, the question mark, all right, to show that this is a question and not, and not uh, a statement. I've spoken about the period, the comma, the colon, this. Now, these braces, yes, braces, look at it. Look at the way. Permit me, please. Right? Pardon me, please. Pardon me, please. Now, this is your braces, okay? 
braze this most time is actually used for mathematical you know terms or computer programs or programming whatever now if you use your braces you can say let's use this you know mathematical figures three you put them that way i believe you understand now to quickly go to my slash or the slashes look at them there are two years slashes s l a s h e s what do we use our slashes for you can use slash yes i've not spoken about the quotation mark now i have only spoken about the question mark please but i've not spoken about the quotation that would be the last i want to talk about the slashes now now or the slash if it's single now the slash can be used you know to separate dates for instance three three then put all nine you know then 2023 like that this is your slash just simple like that now the quotation mark what do you use the quotation mark for use a quotation mark to show that these words are just uh you know was said by someone else are you getting me most of the time please write it down quotation mark are usually used in reported speech all right reported speech you can quote it that you know um the house the house is far it's far then you put your quotation mark then you say you add this comma and continue the the quotation the reported speech the house is far she said she said i believe you can say she said you put your full stop that is this person is actually reporting what someone else has you know said earlier and now with this um as you may say short you know it's about the explanation of punctuation marks symbols that denote you know that makes up a, 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 to make that makes a write-up to be meaningful and logical all right not something that is farcical or illogical or irrational or preposterous now punctuation marks actually makes our text or our writing or our write-up you know look more professional and meaningful and of course easy or easier to read and understand now i believe that you actually enjoy my you know teaching this is english class or english with beatrice thank you for listening i'll see you some other time please subscribe all right and you can leave your comments if there's any correction or any question i will definitely answer such bye see you then